Among the many issues that need to be looked into in this country is road transport. This comes especially following the ghastly situation over the Easter weekend, where we had 235 people killed and more than 1,000 injured on the roads. But what has actually happened since I wrote over the Sharpville weekend, the Human Rights Weekend, end of March, about driver fatigue, I've had many drivers contacting me. And they've been telling me the conditions for many of them they see as even worse now than they were 25 years ago. And also out of this came the issue, uh, once again, of so-called fake licenses. Now this was something I brought to the fore 20 years ago, 1997, when the Ministry of Transport actually officially estimated that there were more than one million fake licenses. These are licenses improperly issued. In other words, drivers have not done the required tests. At that time, the most prominent case that came to the fore was that of Balega Mbete, who is now the Speaker of Parliament, who got a license without having done the test. According to many of the drivers I've spoken to over the past weeks, there's been no real change in this. And what is really worrying is that they tell me that it is now possible to upgrade to what is called generally a Code 14 license. This means a driver who can drive a truck of more than 16 tons, towing a trailer of more than 750 kilograms. I mean, that's a massive juggernaut on the roads. They say something like that costs between four and 5,000 rand. I have no proof of that at the moment, and I'm looking into it. But I have found a lot of evidence and proof of levels of fatigue suffered by drivers who would be driving in a condition where they would be registered as drunk and disorderly, completely out of it for alcohol had they been drinking all night rather than driving all night. Take, for example, there's a, a trip sheet given to me by a driver, Donovan Lebrant. He and his non-driving assistant did a round trip from Cape Town via Port Elizabeth, 3,333 kilometers they did in 55 hours, making 27 deliveries on the route. Now, the first rest or sleep break they had was after 24 hours. This is not only dangerous, it's lethal. Employers, of course, say that the problem is their profits are being squeezed, the margin is no more than 3%. Indeed, this is probably true, but this is part of the race to the bottom. Companies with decent labor practices, and there are a number of them around, are now being pressured to give way on the decent conditions. We have rogue operators, we have labor brokers, and we have now increasingly, it seems, a move by employers, by big companies, to try to get drivers to become owner drivers, putting each driver and each truck in competition with one another, which again is pressure to bring down the rates, to drive beyond the limits, etc. There's also a lack of enforcement, corruption at all sorts of levels. It's extremely complex, I know, but it is something I think, especially given the carnage on our roads, that needs to be dealt with and dealt with urgently. Anyway, that will be the topic or the focus of my Inside Labour column, which you can access on this platform, Fin24, tomorrow, and a version of which will appear in the City Press business section on Sunday. Until then, as always, over to you for comments, suggestions, queries, whatever, to editor at fin24.com. That's editor at fin24.com. And for this week, that's all from me. Cheers.